Alrighty, so this will be the solution to question number seven from the sample IB exam, paper one. So in this one, we have to evaluate the definite integral from zero to four of one over two x plus one, and we're gonna give the answer in the form ln of k, where k is some real number. So it's gonna turn out we're just gonna get ln of some number at the end, you'll see this. So I guess a couple things to talk about briefly. One, I think this is just a formula you're expected to know. So I'm gonna do an indefinite integral first. So I'm gonna write one over ax plus b and dx, so that means x is our variable. So this is gonna be our variable. Again, I'm gonna take the long-winded approach here. We could do this in two seconds, but I'm gonna uh, just try to talk about it a little bit more. This is a constant, so just some number. And our other value is also a constant, just some number. So what you need to know, and I think this is just a formula that you're expected to know, is that if you evaluate this indefinite integral, you get one over a multiplied by the natural logarithm of the absolute value of ax plus b. And remember for indefinite integrals, you always have to add this plus c, okay? So this is the formula I think that you just, you just they expect you to know this, so you should know this. Okay, so now we know this. Let's look at this one. So I'm gonna do an indefinite integral first. Well, let's even just keep it definite. It really doesn't matter in this case. So from zero to four, so there's gonna be a couple little differences here. One over two x plus one dx. So when we compute this antiderivative, so again, two, that's our a value. Notice the b value doesn't really pop up except for over here. So it's the a value that gets pulled out front as one over a. So two is gonna be our a value, so let's keep an eye on that one. So in this case, we'll get one over, well, our a value, which is two, and then we'll have the natural logarithm of basically just what's underneath here, two x plus one. Now for a definite integral, when you do a definite integral, you don't have to worry about this plus c. So we are gonna put our zero to four here because we have to start plugging in these limits of integration, the upper limit and the lower limit. So that's the upper limit, And this is our lower limit. So to actually get to this point in a calculus class, you do something known as U substitution. I am 99.9% .9 sure that they do not expect you all to know U substitution. And if somebody out there watching this knows otherwise, please correct me because I would like to, um, well, I'll just go back and remake the video. So what we first do is we plug in our upper limit of integration in for x. So I'm gonna get one half and I'm just even gonna put this in brackets. We can do the one half at the end. So I'm gonna do one half of ln. So I'm gonna do two times the upper limit, which is four plus one minus, well, I would, I, we would take the natural logarithm and now we do the same thing. We plug in our lower limit of integration. And recall, there's always a minus sign when you do uh, this type of uh, a definite integral. There's always a minus sign in between. So I'm gonna plug in zero. So then we would have two times zero plus one. Okay, so again, the absolute value is gonna be a little redundant here because these are gonna be clearly positive values. So we've got one half of, well, I'm gonna drop the absolute value because again, I'm recognizing that the numbers inside are already positive. So two times four is eight plus one. That's gonna be the natural logarithm of nine minus, okay, well, two times zero is zero plus one. That's the natural logarithm of one. Now we talked about evaluating logarithms previously. So let's look at the natural logarithm of one because this is one you should just know as well. So the natural logarithm so that's the same thing, that's special notation, that's log base of e of one. So I'm thinking, okay, so this equals some number. 
I'm thinking e to what power equals 1. That's what I have to think about. That's what I'm thinking about in my brain. So e to what power equals 1? Well, e to the 0 power is what equals 1, right? Anything raised to the 0 power other than 0 is equal to 1. So this is going to equal... This is just going to equal 0. So let me give myself a little space here. Let me rewrite this. So this is going to be 1 half the natural logarithm of 9. Well, minus 0, because again, we just said the natural logarithm of 1. That is 0. So we can basically forget this term. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it, in fact. So we're almost there at this point. But now remember properties of logarithms. Exponents can come out as coefficients. But likewise, coefficients can go up as exponents. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to rewrite this as the natural logarithm of 9 raised to the 1 half power. Well, that just means the same thing as taking the square root. So really, we have the natural logarithm of the square root of 9. And that's just going to give us the natural logarithm of 3. And bing, bang, boom we've got the solution. So if you are interested in u, uh, u, u substitution, again, I, I don't think you guys need to know this. I think, I think what you need to know is that formula. That's just something you're going to have to walk in there knowing and just, and just have that sort of uh, in your memory bank. But I definitely have tons of videos on u substitution, certainly ones dealing with logarithms, many problems dealing with other types of examples as well. But um, if you're interested, certainly feel free to dig around, and you can certainly find some. So I think the moral of the story in, in this problem is, do you know this, this formula that's part of it? Do you know how to evaluate logarithms? And do you know properties of logarithms? That's really what this question, I think, is designed to, to test.